Well, we've been concerned about that for some time. It wasn't new uh, just because the Reserve Bank gave us some advice about it. But it's always been the case that in a fast rise market, uh, people borrowing a lot of money, stretching themselves, are vulnerable to interest rate increases. And in a market that rises that fast, it can fall. That's what happens pretty much any other property market uh, with the same dynamics. So <clears throat> we've always been concerned about it said so publicly uh, the as I understand it the banks and lend making the lending calculations provide for a buffer uh, above you know that if interest rates increase uh, the borrowers have the have the income to be able to service the debt in the end it's a matter for the borrower they take a risk by really stretching themselves um, and they well, you don't have to deal with the consequences of rising interest rates if that's what happens. But it's a risk for the government and for the Reserve Bank in terms of financial stability. Did the Reserve Bank make any sort of policy recommendations such as debt to income ratios could be helpful? Well, they've, they've talked about them. Uh, I don't, given the criteria the banks apply, we haven't seen evidence that this kind of situation represents a threat to financial stability. Uh, it, may, it may be a, if interest rates rose sharply, it would certainly be a pressure on that household. Uh, but the households go into these arrangements and go into this level of borrowing with their eyes open, knowing that they're taking a, a risk on interest rates in the hope of uh, getting into the market, get, or getting into the house and maybe in getting the value uplift that goes with a rising market. Uh, yes, they do. I mean, why why would anyone else take responsibility for their risk? I mean, the system does what it needs to to ensure that the system isn't at risk. Uh, quite, you know, quite happy that the Reserve Bank and the banks have taken reasonable steps there. Uh, but in the end, it's up to households to take responsibility for their own level of borrowing. So the government help them take responsibility by ensuring that housing investment is on the same playing field as other kinds of savings, when we clearly know it's not. Well, you know, it's taxed in the same way as you know, the other forms of business if you're in the business of housing. It's not taxed in the same way as in, of, of savings. If you're looking at investing in a household, it's a form of saving that you are. And there's a, there's a difference in how that's taxed and how savings are taxed in New Zealand. And that's been proof. There are economists out there now saying that's one of the reasons for rising house prices and land prices and why people are having to take on so much more money for a first time. Well, you know, I think that we could... Look, I understand those arguments are being made. I mean, we've, you know, the, we've made some changes to the tax regime, which we think are satisfactory. Uh, but And I, I don't think you'd want to get it out of proportion. I think the fundamental issue remains um, supply. And uh, it, whatever the house price level, you are going to find households who stretch themselves to get enough debt uh, and they're always going to be vulnerable to rises in interest rates. That's a risk they take. Do you think it's realistic though to say interest rates could rise to seven and a half percent which is what the reserve being included Well I think I think they're just modelling risk. I don't I don't think it's likely that interest rates are going to go to seven and a half percent in a hurry.